diving in though, we're going to move on to part two. Uh, the houses this is falling in for each of you by your sidereal rising sign. Grab a pen and paper if you need to write this down. If you're really familiar with your chart and with the house systems and astrology, you may not need this information. Um, if you have Aries rising, this is a 12th house new moon for you. And 12th house themes have to do with privacy and seclusion. They have to do with spirituality. They have to do with the unconscious mind, right? The 12th house is what exists and what takes place in the periphery of our awareness, right? We're not quite onto it, but it can affect our behavior and other people might be able to pick up on it. The 12th house can also be concerned with escapist tendencies and addictions, but it also has to do with selfless service, right? Uh, Taurus, though, if you have Taurus rising, this is an 11th house new moon for you. So that's friends and organizations, it's hopes and dreams, which is one of my favorite themes to work with. Uh, if you have Gemini rising, like I do, it's going to be a 10th house new moon, which is kind of exciting. So this is career and achievement. This is awards, it's fame, it's recognition, it's status, right? It's uh, your public perception, right? Your reputation. I think we mentioned that. If you have Cancer rising, though, it's going to be a ninth house new moon for you. So this is more international affairs. This is long distance travel, long distance communication. Uh, you may have dealings with folks from other countries or from foreign cultures. Uh, this can have to do with publishing and broadcasting. When we're talking about long distance communication, that could be, you know, novels. It can be podcasts. It can be live streams. It can be any type of long distance communication. Legal and higher education matters are also ninth house, right? Uh, so don't forget those. And philosophy and law, well, we talked about legal, but philosophy. So, you know, if that's an interest of yours. And then for Leo rising, this is gonna be an eighth house new moon. So this is other people's money, right? Uh, resources, this is resources, excuse me, can't talk today, uh, that come to you through the people in your life, right? So this could be your partner's income. This can be investment earnings. It can be insurance money that comes to you or insurance that you're buying. It can be debt. Uh, and, and that includes taxes. So taxes that you owe or taxes that are due back to you. Bonus and commission income also fall under the eighth house. Wills, estates, things like that. Um, and then some more kind of occult and esoteric themes that you can choose to work with. If finance isn't ringing for you, you can uh, work with your new moon intention setting around themes of death, rebirth, or transformation, regeneration, healing, especially psychological healing. That's one that's nice to work with when you have an eighth house new moon. And then for Virgo rising, this is going to be seventh house. So marriage and partnership, uh, business, relationships with other people in general, including your open enemies, your rivals. And then the seventh house, and specifically the descendant, uh, can speak to what we reject about ourselves and what we project onto other people. Okay. Uh, for Libra rising, this is sixth house new moon for you. So work, health, pets, daily routines, your habits and schedules, your diet also falls under the eighth house. Uh, so if you want to adopt new dietary habits or a new or you know a new daily schedule, daily routine. You can do that with a new moon in Pisces if you have Libra rising. Uh, for Scorpio rising, we're working with the fifth house. So this is creativity, love, children, uh, romance, uh, things that we do for fun and pleasure, including risk taking, gambling, sports, things like that. Uh, so a lot of a lot of room to play depending on the state of your financial life if you happen to have Scorpio rising. For Sagittarius rising, this will be a fourth house new moon. So that's home and property, right? That's family, that's your parents, that's later life. Uh, real estate falls under the fourth house. And then for Capricorn, third house, travel and communication, neighbors, like we were talking about earlier today. This is travel and communication that happens local to you. So short distance and generally a good rule of thumb is, I would say, within about 500 miles of where you live, okay? Uh, but the third house can also have to do with your siblings, your cousins, your aunts and uncles, so your your extended family, right? And then uh, for Aquarius, this is a second house new moon, which is earned income and expenses. And I love sec Capricorn Sun. I love second house new moons. I love second house new moons because every year you have an opportunity to take an active conscious step towards boosting your income uh, and you can you know you can ride a wave and why wouldn't you want to do that why wouldn't you want to take advantage of every 
uh, opportunity and every advantage that you have to to boost your income and, and get yourself into you know a, a, a nice comfortable financial place so for Aquarius if you have second house use this time to start a new income earning venture whether that's to you know talk to your boss about a raise and make a good case for why you you know are worth more money uh, whether that's selling some possessions that you have and using that money to, you know, add to your savings account. Second house has to do with money that you earn, but it also has to do with your possessions. It also has to do with your movable assets, right? Um, it also has to do with expenses. So it's not just money that comes to you. But this is a wonderful opportunity to take active steps towards starting something whether, you know, maybe that's a second job or a side hustle or just like, you know, maybe you're thinking about starting a blog, anything like that, and then build it because about six months from now, you'll start to see the payoff. You'll really start to see the income from that kicking in and affecting your life in a very positive way. And so start now. The payoff comes later. Delayed gratitude. Very Capricornian theme. Happy to help you with that there. Uh, Pisces. If you have Pisces rising, this is a first house new moon of course it's your birthday new moon you can use it any way you want to but first house of course has to do with appearance and self-expression right it has to do with our personality and our identity it has to do with our physical body um it has to do with how we interact with the world around us our mannerisms and our behavior um, so it's a great opportunity if you want to cultivate a new healthy behavior um, to you when you have a, a new moon in your first house to do that but like I said, it's your birthday new moon. So if you have Pisces rising in the sidereal zodiac, you can use this particular new moon any way that you want to. And so if you're joining us late, I've just kind of reviewed what the houses are for each of you by your sidereal rising sign. What we're going to do now is kind of dive into the Pisces archetypes and themes. And I, I hope you brought <laughs> some paper and a pen with you because this one's juicy.